and we are being live streamed now hey everybody welcome to the children's book pro uh, uh live stream q a good to have everybody here and uh yeah um we got people coming in from all parts of the the universe we've got orem louisiana south africa where wow. are you seeing this I'm over on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to put out fires over here. I got Chris texting me asking <laughs> for approvals on like authentication <laughs> codes and stuff while you're let me head over there. Hey, can you can you send me a quick link, Jake, in our chat? Uh, yeah, YouTube, so I can see yeah, the, no the chat and answer questions and stuff. Yep. So yeah, while everybody's uh, piling in, uh. I just want to say thank you for uh, joining us here today, and we're grateful to have, uh, you know, another cohort of people to do Children's Book Pro with. But yeah, we're here to answer uh, any and all uh, questions about Children's Book Pro. This is, we've run it a handful of times now for the last uh, year and a half, I would say. This will be Children's Book Pro group four or five. I think I think it's I, five, and this is a high functioning. Yeah, we've we've yeah we've worked through any of the kinks and stuff that happened right in the beginning, and uh, mm -hmm. got all the files are clearly marked, and yeah, it's 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 a it's a well oiled machine now. Yep. So, we got a question here from uh, Art Lover Animation. Question: Will we be getting a syllabus for the whole class, or just week by week? Um, it's just released week by week. I, I, uh, that's a good, that's a good question. It's not like we're trying to hide that stuff. If you go into the class shell, you should probably be able to see all the content for each week. You just can't click on it. Mm -hmm. So I guess syllabus is kind of like an, an outline of it. You can see that right now on the, uh, sign up page. Yep. Um, the whole thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, we're just outlines what everything is. Um, hi to Jamaica. Wow. All right. This is a good question by Alex. Um, how is the course more beneficial or substantially different than taking the current SVS courses or being involved in the forums? That's a great question. Can I, um, can I answer that one? Oh, I was going to just ahead. dive you, into that one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could, if you want it, you could take it. I don't care. Well, you'll um, feel, go ahead. just correct me where I'm wrong, but so we just, to, just I love giving a little bit of history about this class. Cause we, um, we launched a class about 10 years ago called how to illustrate children's books or something like that. And I had spent five months um, designing that class and trying to, trying to find everything that I could possibly find that need, needed to go in there. And that class sold out. We, it was a live class only and it sold out really quick and we ran it and our, the students were really appreciative and we really enjoyed making it and uh and teaching them and and then uh but the thing is what we did was we recorded those sessions and they were two hours times i think we met 14 times so there was like um 28 hours of video yeah and it's still on the website the problem was because it was only coming from my perspective as a children's book illustrator i didn't have uh I, you know i didn't didn't to run it through Jake and Lee to get their input and to try to figure out what they thought the class was needing or missing or anything. And so it turns out when the three of us decided to redo that class and the real reason was it was recorded in zoom. It had poor audio. Um, it was two hour dumps of video. So, you know, imagine a, you got a two hour block. If you go into that class on SVS and you've got a slider and there's no chapters, there's no way of knowing what's, how to get to the thing you know if you went back in the class and tried to find that one thing that you remembered us saying mm -hmm. but you couldn't remember exactly there's like virtually no way you were going to find it again so we decided let's do this right let's let's split it up into the three of us to to try to uh, i also want to want to add really quick mm -hmm. that first class was when i had just gotten my first book published my first children's book so mm -hmm. i was on my second book and just sharing what I had learned on on working on that first book and making that second book deal. And this is now I'm ten books into my 
you know, children's book illustration career when we created mm-hmm. this course, you have way more experience. Yeah, we has more experience. And so, yeah, so this course is, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just want yeah. to add like, we've so got, the, but there's chat 30 years of experience since that first course was dropped. Yeah. And then, and, and there's probably over a hundred video segments. I, I, I haven't counted them all up, but they're, they're, they're it I mean, is could, a ton of hours of, of information, you know, going back to the original question, um, how is it different than a normal class? This is comprehensive, complete class start to finish um, in terms of subject matter. If you take a class, I mean, our, our SVS courses are great and they're, but they're subject matter specific. And that's why we built a curriculum at mm-hmm. SVS is there's, you know, 22 classes in there. But, you know, if you looked at any one class, it might be how to draw vehicles, for example. Well, you could be great at drawing vehicles, but how does that equate into a career? This is taking all that stuff from a foundation, a solid foundation in art and saying, okay, I want to do children's book or I want to do sequential art and this is how you do it. And so the biggest difference is we're in those classes, we're teaching you how to draw things. Mm -hmm. In this class, we're teaching you how to think, how to interpret a manuscript, how to uh, stage pacing. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a lot different in terms of the subject matter than a normal technique class. Mm-hmm. And so we're hoping that m- most people have at least some experience with art, but you don't have to have experience in art because this class really is about how do you tell a better story? And that's the number one thing that we see. We run a contest every month for those of you guys who aren't familiar with it. Uh, we were doing that for a number of years. And the biggest problem wasn't that people couldn't draw or paint. The biggest problem was they weren't painting and drawing interesting things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they that's what this class address. Yeah. They couldn't tell a good story and there's, mm-hmm. there's techniques to do that. How do you speed up pacing? How do you slow down pacing? Um, where do you put the, you know, a, a, a build in the, in the story or the climax of the story? Uh, so there's, that's what that goes into. And so it's a lot different than a normal class. And like Will said, mm-hmm. it's a lot more comprehensive. It's 10 weeks long organized and it's the only class we have where it's three teachers. So when we were actually teaching the class, each of us would do the same lecture or this or the same demo, but we do it in different ways. And mm-hmm. and so while Jake or Will are doing their demo, what I thought was the only way to do something, they would do it differently. And I would be like, oh my gosh, that's that's such a better way to do it. Or it's just and, a different way to and do then it. Lee, yeah. And then Lee would say, yeah, you guys did it better than me. Never happened. I'm just <laughs> telling you what Will and Jake were thinking most of the time is Lee is amazing. <laughs> and, uh, and my technique works better, but no, everybody has a different, uh, uh, approach to learning that they respond to. Everybody has a different, uh, a way of drawing and, and addressing the information. And so where you might not respond to what I do, you will respond to what Jake does or what will does and vice versa on some other stuff. And so it's the only one that's taught comprehensively like that. And you can see how different people approach mm-hmm. the same thing. And that's extremely valuable. Yeah. I, I want to do a really quick shout out to Luke Mor- Murray there. Mm-hmm. Um, just a really cool little anecdotal thing. He, he's he been leaving some cool comments on my YouTube channel um, mm-hmm. series that I've been doing. So I had to like swim upstream, like, who is this guy? And uh, <laughs> he's this, this, uh, this young guy who he makes, he has his own YouTube channel. So you guys should check him out sometime. He's got All some right. fun stuff on there. Great. Love to see uh, that. The question right above Luke's there from uh, Steph is, says, is there a limit to class size? And I think there's a underlying question to that as well. So first off, every time we launch this, we make it available for a limited time for whoever can, uh, you know, afford or purchase or the timing's just right. So we let in as many people as we can, as time will permit. But the other question is, is this, like a self-guided course, or is this like a, a teacher student, like collaborative kind of course? And we, we wanted to make it available to a broader uh, amount of people. So that inhibited our, our ability to review each individual piece of work as they came in homework. Um, and what we decided to come up with was this, this hybrid version, because we didn't want to just drop classes in your lap and uh, and then you have no contact with us. And so what we decided to do was this hybrid thing where we would drop the classes, you would watch them at your own pace, do the homework at your own pace, but then every week we have a Zoom session like this 
Um, and it's not on YouTube. It's in the private Zoom um, uh, ecosystem, whatever, where you can ask whatever question you want on the homework that week, on what we talked about that week. You know, sometimes we get questions way out of left field that are applicable that that we may not have covered and we'll answer those, you know, based on our experience. And so it's this nice, great way where you every week get to check in with a professional illustrator who's, you know, in the trenches and, you know, and just have this, this uh, sort of this direct line into the, the publishing industry. Um, and at the same time, you don't have to show up at, you know, 4 p.m. in an afternoon to, uh, to watch two hours of, of, you know, classes and then get, a, you know, see everybody else's homework being, you know, run over and, and talked about. And so it's a way that you can efficiently get through the information while still having like personal contact with, with the teachers. And that's, that's really what this is. Yeah. And we do, we do critique some of the work. There's a, there's a discord forum and that's been one of the, one of the most pleasant surprises with running this class is we get mm -hmm. our, our, our student body into that discord and they become friends and the, there's crits that happen in there amongst just the students and there's all kinds of chat and we're checking that during the week as well and, and chiming mm -hmm. in. Um, but we do pick from, if we see like one thing happening over and over in the homework, we pull those in and do a little demo on that one and say, yeah, a lot of you guys are running into this problem or this problem. So we do demo and cut and kind of do it as a example for the whole. Yep. All right. There's another question here that will this go for it uh, from Kat. Will this class be offered again in the future? Probably it may not. I mean, it's not, it may not be run in the same way every time. We don't know how long, I mean, each of us are still working professional illustrators. We have carved out this time to do this zoom session once a week. And it's actually going to be four illustrators in the zoom session. It's going to be uh, Will and Jake one week, and then it'll be me and David Hone. Uh, the following weeks, David Hone teaches our perspective classes and rendering classes and all, all sorts of classes. He's a great illustrator too. And so, uh, so we alternate. Um, so I'm, I, I, we hope it's going to be offered in the future like this, but it might not be. Yeah. And I want to speak to that, the two different uh, teachers every week. So uh, one week, me and Will, we meet with you in the mornings. Uh, it, it's 10, oh. a, 11 a.m. Pacific. Morning in the U.S. Morning in the U.S., <laughs> right. 11 a.m. Pacific. And then in the evenings, uh, Will or, or Lee and, and David, they meet the following week it's an evening meeting. And the reason we did that, we ran the first time and we did um, what we did was morning and evening every week. And what we found was uh, just a diminishing amount of people showing up uh, and, and, and a lot of the same exact information being repeated over and over. And so, uh, and so we decided what we'll do is we record these. So every time we finish, immediately we upload those, you know, you could see it within, you know, a few hours to 24 hours. Right. And, and in case you missed it, you could just watch it then. But if you can't do mornings, then you know that every other week you're going to get an evening session and you could be live there in the evening. And if you can't do evenings for whatever reason, you could do a morning session and, and be there live every other week. And so that was just a way to kind of meet the needs of a global uh, uh, class essentially. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Next question here that goes from, from Luke. Uh, what's the most valuable tool you teach during this course? I think That's it's how to think, how, how you, to approach. You can't, uh, you can't uh, make a hierarchy out of those. They're all necessary. I would say, no, no, they are all necessary. I think for me, if I had taken this course prior to getting work in publishing, the most valuable thing would be to understand um, the the sort of the business, getting an agent, putting your portfolio together, getting your work out there. How do you? How does the whole process work in publishing? That sort of information that's on the back end of the course, the last three weeks, are probably would be for me the most valuable. Uh, leading into this because I had already kind of cracked the code of how do you tell us a, a story mm. uh, visually front end early in my career, I would have 
actually absolutely thought the front end of the of the the course was more valuable because um it was teach it, it, we teach very specifically here's how you develop a character for children's books here's how you develop uh uh here's how you work with a manuscript and visually tell the story through illustration so that your illustrations lead the eye through the page and lead to page turns and and you have a lot of uh, flexibility and, and freedom with as an illustrator working in a manuscript and you're not tied down to it. And that kind of information would have been so helpful for me early on. So it depends on where you are at your career. Short answer is it depends on where you're at. Uh, what is you're going to find most valuable for this? A children's book, if you haven't done one, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And that what Jake was just talking about is what I would have gotten out of it in terms of the most valuable tool is that how do you organize this giant project yeah. and have it work mm -hmm you know, where you're not freaking out and you're, and you're, you know, you're just taking little bite-sized chunks out of the whole thing. Right. And are you working in a way that's moving you forward? Cause it's easy enough on a big project, like a book to go off on a tangent and actually not be working towards a good finish on the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think my early efforts on, in children's illustration, uh, in, in picture books were the books were serviceable, but they weren't told. I wasn't telling stories that well, mm -hmm. if I understood this process, the stories would have been told a lot better in my pictures. Yeah. But let me, let me just insert this too. This is an idea that I want to put out there. If, if, if you guys that are here watching have ever taken a course, I would love to know about it at a art school or at a college or university, but I taught an illustration class at UVU. Um, I think four years. And then the, another illustrator took it over after that. I found I, my goal was to have my students be able to go in and have a complete book dummy by the end of the class. And after the four, four years, I abandoned that idea. And the reason is there's too much to teach in a semester. I could not put it into a class. I didn't have uh, all the, the tools that we've created for this class to teach from either. But even if I had... There's, there's too much. So you guys are going to go through this in the, the ones that are signed up. I see a few people in here that are already signed up for it. You're going to, you're going to have 10 weeks to go through this. Just know this, we didn't design it so that you could hurry up and really quickly have a, a book dummy. It's, it's, that's not the point of this. What we did was we said, um, let's put everything in here that we needed to learn that we have learned over the years that you need to know and we're going to deliver it in 10 weeks but it's going to be really tough to unless that's this is the only thing you do like like everybody has a different schedule right some people have a job some people have families at home different uh, demands on their time but um it's going to be really difficult and i i couldn't do it in a, a semester what i ended up doing was having teaching about how to make children's books and how to make children's book art and basically just giving assignments that were children's related, mm -hmm. but they're, they're just know this there. You can't take this kind of a course in college that I've ever heard of because it's too hard to get through this, even in a semester. Um, so you guys will be going through this in 10 weeks and, you know, and for some, some really do keep up on it and some do really come up with, a really good book dummy at the end because of how much time they have. I guess I'm saying this now because if you don't have time, just know that you don't have to do it in this in these 10 weeks. You can take as much time as you want because you have access to the mm -hmm. videos as long as you want. You have access to the Discord long after the class. And we've had students that have taken this more than once because the first time they went through, they kind of just didn't have time to keep up on the, the work. And they took that same project in and worked on it the second time. Um, and, and found that they got even more out of it and they got a lot out of the Q and a sessions as they were working on it. Um, so just kind of want to, so it's packed, it's very dense. Yeah. Most, most people don't keep up with it and we don't expect you to, I mean, to think that you're going to end up cause we don't just go right into the dummy week one and say, okay, we got 10 weeks, like a normal college semester. I got 10 weeks. And at the end you have this shiny, great dummy. It's not about that. It's about the process of making good stories and telling good stories. And so, you know, I think we're like five weeks in before we get to the dummy because we're breaking down individual things. We're having you do individual 
assignments that are standalone assignments. And then we say, okay, we're going to get into the dummy now. There's no way you're going to do one in five weeks. Um, you know, maybe a thumbnail version of it or something like that, but it's, it's just so much. And, and, you know, like Will said, everybody's at a different place when, with both the time they have and the ability they have. And I wanted to answer a question that hasn't been asked yet, but we always get it is, is this course good for pros or is this good course good for beginners? And I, I'm going to say both, and it sounds disingenuous to say that, um, yes. but let me explain myself. Uh, for pros, you're going to be able to take, because you already have such a strong foundation, you understand what we're talking about. Uh, you're going to be able to take the information, implement it immediately and, and run with it. And so that's great for you. And then for the beginner, uh, you might not even be great at drawing yet. You're going to be processing this over and over. You're going to do a dummy. It's not going to be the greatest dummy of all time but it'll be one that you have to do to do the next dummy. Mm -hmm. And then it'll start to all sink in. And so it'll be a little bit longer uh, gestation pre period for you. Um, but it's great for you even before learning to draw. Like, do I need to be able to draw great? You don't. Um, it's, it's helpful, but you don't. And so this is how to tell a good story. And so it, it can land on wherever you are in your uh, uh, art career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to jump down because we're in this this thread this thought thread here and the question is um what now i lost it but essentially what advice would you give to someone taking this course for them to make the most effective use of it essentially what are some what are three tips to effectively take this course and i think will spoke to one of them and and that is um i guess my tip would be uh, do the, if you have time, uh, do the homework after the, um, the zoom session. Okay. So, uh, because a lot of times what happens in, in the zoom session is we clarify, well, it depends on your schedule. Sometimes you, <laughs> you, you locked yourself into a corner. Well, yeah. well, but no, we, I know what you're trying to say. Wait, I think what you're saying is delay, but if everyone delayed, then there wouldn't be much to talk about. Yeah. So, but the thing is, there are some people that will do it and and keep up on it and then you'll learn a lot after i don't think that's a problem like i guess if you're you're going to benefit if you do the homework and you get benefit because you'll we'll be able to tell you what's working and what's not and then you can go back and fix it if you don't do the homework you're going to hear what's working and what's not and then you get a fresh start you know you get a better leg up when you start doing it so Decide what kind of student you are and how you learn best. And that's how you're going to get most out of those Zoom sessions. I would say what a practical tip is a lot enough time to watch the videos like we've touched on. It's a lot of information. And some of the weeks, I mean, it's hours of video. And and you need to set aside that time to really listen to the, not don't just have it playing in the background while you're gardening or making dinner or something. You will not get a lot out of it like that. You need to sit down and make notes do sketches while we're talking um, and really, really watch, you know, like, like it's a live session or something like that. Really, uh, you know, give yourself the time to soak in the information. Um, the other thing is don't try to be too crafty and rewrite what we're trying to do. Um, so we do give you guys three manuscripts. Uh, they're just suggestion. They're just uh, placeholder manuscripts. Uh, they're three classic fairy tales. There's nothing great about them. They're just normal. We've condensed them down to children's book length, Hansel mm -hmm. and Gretel, uh, uh, what is it? Jack and the Beanstalk. And, and, and Little Red. Little Red Riding Hood. And mm -hmm. they're just basic stories. But what happens sometimes is the first week, everybody's got so much energy and everybody's got so much time because they haven't started doing the work yet. They're like, oh, I'm going to rewrite Little Red Riding Hood, except now it's going to be in space and they're, you know, they're well, aliens. What was the instead. last children's book pro? What was the way out of left field somebody uh, turned hansel and gretel into a salmon and a avocado yeah which yeah. was cool there was some it there were some really cool <laughs> illustrations and it was but, like it was pushed so far but one of our one of our criticisms of that was it's you're not going to find much appeal when you if you use it to try to pitch it to an art director they're they're not going to relate to it at all mm -hmm. so far out there well the the other thing is don't spend your time rewriting the stories that we're already giving you like we do demos on those stories and when we're asked to illustrate a page from little red riding hood i'm not changing uh changing it to dinosaurs and you know different 
different characters and trying to rewrite Little Red Riding Hood. I'm just saying, okay, Little Red Riding Hood's doing this thing. I need to make that scene as interesting as I can. Mm -hmm. And that's how I want you guys to approach it. Like, just don't, don't overthink the manuscript and think like, I'm going to take this Little Red Riding Hood and make it to something totally more creative. Yeah. I mean, that's great and everything, Ooh. but we're really talking about telling stories. We're not talking about this being the perfect story. You know, a I mean? lot of what this, this course is, is about changing your, the way you think about your work so that instead of making work that, that appeals to you, which is important, it's work that appeals to the, the intended audience and also the, the audience, the, the work that appeals to the person that's going to be hiring you. So imagine you're an art director, you're looking for an artist for this next illustration project. And you go to this portfolio and you see, oh, they did Hansel and Gretel, but Hansel's a, a salmon and Gretel's an avocado. I don't need that kind of creativity for this project. Uh, I'll move <laughs> forward. What you want to do is impress them with, you know, creative thinking in the box, right? Like be as creative as you can within these constraints. And that's what we're, we're, we're teaching is that, um, uh, you know, whether it's character design, how you tell a story, how you, 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 you move, you move through, you know, the illustrations and whatnot, that, that you're still being very, very creative and, but it's still relatable and it's still something that people can latch on to. Let's see. Let's go back into the the, the questions here. Um, is this course valuable for sequential illustration and improving art and storytelling content, even though the student is not set on pursuing children's book illustration specifically? Uh, yeah, I think you're going to get. I think you're going to get what you need out of it in, in those regards because we do talk about sequential storytelling, page to page. If you're doing comic books, you probably won't feel satisfied from this course because it is so focused on children's books. If you're doing something like um, spot illustrations, you know, an illustrated novel for middle grade or 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 younger, right? Uh, I think you absolutely would benefit a lot. Of, there's a lot of, a lot of overlap with that um, because we spend so much time on how do you tell a story in a single image. How do you design a, a, an appealing character for uh, children's books? Um, and then the whole making a book dummy, making preparing your work and working with art directors, and then also presenting yourself online in a way that um, makes people want to hire you are all going to be valuable in that regard. But we don't get into the, into the, we do get into the weeds of children's books. We don't get into the weeds of very much outside of children's books. All right, you guys see another one? Let's see, let's Candace see. Saltzman says for homework, would we have to use digital programs like Procreate or could we do our work old school with pencil and paper? Listen, pencil we get, paper, yeah, totally people just snap Photoshop or uh, photos, not Photoshops. They snap photos with their phones. <laughs> of their sketchbooks and upload those as well. So whatever tool works best for you, we do talk about digital tools and what professionals, uh, what the, the professional publishing landscape is right now with digital tools and, and what tools you're going to need to have to, to uh, compete in this market. Um, so we, we do advise you to start learning those things if, if you haven't yet. Um, uh, but you know, for homework and for whatever, if you, if you're comfortable in a sketchbook, absolutely. You're, you're good with that. So Fabian's asking, does it make more sense for me to finish a book, the book myself and get personal feedback session to, to optimize it? Um, that would be great. If you have a mentor that, you know, specifically will do that. Getting a true critique of a children's book dummy is a massive undertaking. Um, be careful there. Uh, because I mean, what, what, what Fabian's implying there is that you, you have all the, uh, the knowledge and the tools to finish the book. And then if you get feedback and somebody says, well, I don't like the story. Can you make it uh, more dramatic? Do you know how to do that? If you do, then maybe this, maybe you don't need the course and you can just write your own, uh, children's book and get it published. But, um, this is more so about 
really learning to tell stories well and 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 learning to build a children's book. And so if you if you already know how to do that, um, you know that might be a, a a route that you could go. But again, finding somebody to give good critiques for children's book dummies is easier said than done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. What exactly is a book dummy? What is it used for? Is it the same as a portfolio? <laughs> Have we got the course for you? <laughs> yeah, this, uh, that's the perfect question. Uh, the dummy yeah. is the dummy is a basically a sketched version of the entire story, and that's typically what you submit to a publisher because publishers like to work uh, with you and the writer uh, on on the project because it's they don't want you to give them thirty two pages of finished artwork and say hey here's a book and they say okay this is great and then they publish it that's just not the way that it works it's this mm-hmm. sketch form and then they'll come back to you and say well we like some of this story but what if we change this and what if we change that and so it's just a way of presenting a story to a publisher that's just not locked down yet and it's uh it it works for being able to show the image but you can go back and, and change the story or change the characters or whatever and there's a lot of back and forth more so than you might think if you haven't done this process before Right. Right. Um, I want to just thank uh, Armed Cadaver Illustrates for the shout out to S- SVS. Uh, just said that CCA offered a children's book class, but SVS Learns course is more comprehensive. Uh, so, yeah, um, let's I see. agree. I'll tell you this. When I was at, at Art Center, I went to Art Center for my undergrad. And, uh, and then I got my master's too. I did two dummies and one in each one of those areas of college. And the whole education was you come in and they say, okay, do a dummy. Do you have a, do you have an idea? Yes, right. I have an idea. Okay. Go do the dummy. That was the instruction. I'm and then you show back you, up. Like, <laughs> it's, there's no instruction. That's what I was trying to explain <laughs> like before, but it didn't really come out that way. But yeah, like the, the problem with, with taking classes like this in, I mean, there's pros and cons in in a, in a university or an art school is usually the teachers, because they're professionals or they've done professional work, they come in and wing it, which works for the better students, but it doesn't work for the students who have no idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of when I started, that's what happened. I, I had no idea what I was doing when I was in school because the teacher would be like, OK, everybody get going on your assignment. I'm like, I don't know where to start. <laughs> and we wrote this class with that in mind, like step one, step two, step three, chap, you know, chapters where you're you're kind of learning along the way. In the the reason that schools can do that is because you, you know, the teacher is physically in the classroom where you can just walk up to them after class and go, What did you mean by this? What did you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Um we couldn't do that. Um, we have the question and answer session, but we needed to make sure that our lessons were nailed down, organized efficient understandable bite-sized chunks Mm -hmm. that are rewatchable so these teaching moments that happen live in classrooms we don't have that problem because you can go back and rewatch them which is really cool yeah and somebody was asking these are always available forever once you buy them you can watch them as many times as you want and that's what we recommend by the way we recommend you do one dummy and do the do the dummy that we present you know whether it's hands on gretel or little red riding hood that's your practice for me. And then do the story that you want to do. Some people always ask, Oh, do you want, do you not want me to write my own story? No, we do want you to write your own story. We do want you to do your own story. Just not first. We want you to practice and then do the real thing. Yeah. Someone did say that the zoom meetings, they, the, they took the course the first time and no longer have access to the zoom meetings. And that's not the same for the other courses. So I'm not sure what happened there. I know we, rearrange some of the folders uh so we'll we'll look into that and see if we can't get those zoom meetings back available for the for the first people but like we were saying these courses these classes will be around once you've you've purchased them you'll have access to them as long as there's an svs to to access right so um uh so you are are you're in good good hands if you're a slower learner, or if you want to keep coming back to these things, and every time you do a new project, to kind of refresh and go through and 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 watch some of the same stuff over and over. So yeah, let me Love answer that. this question from John because this is a good question and it, it's one I wish I had a better answer for, but I'll try. Um, the question is: Would it be possible to share our own dummies with you guys to get feedback? 
that was our original intention when we were building the course is that you take the course and then we'll offer feedback. This is the, the nut we haven't been able to crack is how to critique uh, a full dummy because here's the problem. For you to get good feedback on a dummy, like I said earlier, it would take five thousand dollars to to get enough time. It would take it takes us hours to go through a dummy because it's thirty two pages. And if we change page three, well, guess what? Every single page now dominoes and has to be changed as well. And then we need to look at that. And it's just an ongoing cycle. We haven't been at, figured out how to critique dummies in a meaningful way. And that's, uh, you know you yeah. Yeah, like SCBWI offers it. If you are familiar with the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, they do it. They get, you pay sixty five bucks and they'll look at your dummy. They're not looking at your dummy in a real way. They're they just, just saying, they oh, make this- they make comments. I've done it before. We've we've yeah, all me too. Paid, we've been paid to do those portfolio reviews, and you have a, a half an hour per person, and all you really have time to do is say what you like and what where you think the problem areas are, but you don't have a have time to go through it and say here's how I would fix it. Because like you said, it's like you, you change one page, you turn, you you say this page would be better as a spread or this spread would be better as a page. Now you've got an extra page to deal with throughout the whole book. Where, where do you move every it shifts, everything in there. And um, this is the reason why we have the discord. This is the reason why we encourage students to form critique groups because working on a, a book dummy to get it ready to send mm-hmm. to an agent or a publisher is something that you have to work on. You know, you, you have version one, like every book that I've illustrated, I, I've got folders on my computer, version one, two, three, four, five, usually yeah, by up four to 10, or five. 20. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, I've got tons. And so for us to, to, to go through someone's dummy and, and find all the problems and, and say, here's how we would fix it. We basically have to do your project for you. Right. You know I mean, like we have to, we have to break it down that far. And so that's why we haven't been able to, to offer that. It would, it would be mean, it would mean us setting aside the career work that we do to just do that. And we don't want to do that with our time. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to give you the tools to do that yourself and in critique groups. And that's really where the power lies is in well, learning it- this craft yourself so that you can self-critique and that's kind of what we're doing with how to fix your art which is our our monthly live stream thing that we're doing uh for free absolutely free and every month we uh take uh you know 20 minutes and run through uh very very uh not too deep but but just enough to like to like uh uh, instill an understanding of a principle. So it might be perspective or it might be character design, which is what I did last, last month. And Will's doing concept, how to come up with a concept. So we teach a, a mini course, 20 minutes, and then we show on a handful of, of people who have submitted their work, how to fix that, uh, how to apply it to, to that work right there. And then we're collecting um, these lectures and these things that we're doing into these PDFs, which are then going to be available, um, where you can go through and and kind of, I, I would say like go through and uh, compare your work to what the lecture's teaching, to what the rubric that we have at the end, the checklist that we have at the end, saying, you know, did you look for this? Did you look for that? Are you doing this? If yes, you know, good. You can move on to this other thing. And that whole thing is to help people to fix their art um, or, or gain, like Will was saying, gain the tools that they need to fix the art, their art on their, on their own as well. Uh, Fiona asked, can I apply the knowledge from this course to a picture book biography or nonfiction types? Absolutely. And that's what's so good about it is storytelling is storytelling. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about a dragon in a castle, fantastic stuff, or you're talking about the Wright brothers, you know, inventing a flying machine or something like that. It's, you know, if the Wright brothers are inventing this flying machine and that's what the book's about, you want to build the tension with, uh, you know, they have a, uh, an attempt and a failure, an attempt and a failure. And how do you ratchet up that tension to where they actually fly at the end? You can do it with any story, whether it's true or, or, or not. Yep. Um, let's see a question here. This varies widely. I'm sure this varies widely, but on average, how much time would you say a successful student spends working on this course? Beginning, uh, not much. 
uh, an hour or two as it starts rolling, it gets a lot more. <laughs> I'd say 10, six to 10 hours a week. If you were to keep up and say, you know, at the end of 10 weeks, you're like, I did the course and I'm done. You'd have to have at least, at least 10 to 15 hours a week by the end. Yeah. I, I would say like, if I were to take this course with my life being as it is right now, um, uh, where I have a day job, I have family, I have, you know, other commitments, I would probably just carve out, I would eliminate something in my, in my life, like watching movies for the next 10 weeks and, or playing video games or something like that. <laughs> I'd eliminate some of that, that uh, sort of decompression time. And what I would do is go to bed earlier, wake up before my kids get up in the morning for an hour and just do that every week and maybe a couple hours on, on Saturday. And that would give me, you know, that would give me seven, eight hours a week to work on it. If, if and, you could scrape out five hours a week, that's enough to do the course in a meaningful way. Yeah. You're not going to finish the course, Yeah, but it's enough to really be there in a real way. I mean, and, and sorry, I went into such detail there, but that's, I know a lot AJ. of people are in, in the same situation. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, Sarah's saying, yeah, she works full time. Wonder how hard it would be to fit it in. You know, four to five hours a week, that's more than enough to really get into the content and um, and get get the most out of it. Again, you can go yeah. back through it multiple times and we suggest that. To, to do the cram version is not the best version because you're not actually learning that much. I used to have that lecture all the time with my college students because every, at the beginning of every term, they want to take all the classes. And so they take five different art classes at a college level. And then week three or four, they realize they can't do all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. better to go slow and small and really digest the information than it is to try to do everything mm -hmm. quickly. Here's the thing. It took me, um, it's embarrassing. It took me probably six or eight children's books to finally feel like I knew what I was doing. And mm -hmm. the reason is I didn't have anything like this class. If I had ha if I had been able to get the information out of this class, I would have been there in a in probably one or two books. I made so many mistakes, and I made them over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I look at my first like literally eight books, and um, you know, and and there was a there's a there's a good learning curve in actually doing that much work as well. But I look back at them, and there's so many things that I did um that i would change if i had a chance to re-illustrate those books today if i got those assignments it would be a totally different book so you, you one you have to realize that like if you're going to embark on this children's book illustrating as a career it's not something that you're going to learn in, in 10 weeks it's just not mm -hmm. this is the information that you need for a lifetime of illustrating children's books um it's it's the tools it's the tool bag that will really help you and also will speed up the process, but it's not, um, there is no magic bullet. You're, you're going to have to do the work and, uh, you know, and it's fun work. And that's the reason why you're here is because we have the best job in the world, really. I mean, we get to, we get to make what we want. We get to write stories. We get to influence the lives of these little ones. And it's, a, it's a, it's such a treat to watch them consuming our books. There are no help wanted signs in the, illustration world i mean there's there's just mm -hmm. not right mm -hmm. so it's it's something that you have to work really hard on to give yourself the tools to make art directors or if you're working you know going to self-publish to make your end consumer go i need that book or i want to work with that illustrator i want to work with that author and um it's it's a labor of love yeah i like this question from art lover again if a book took about six months to illustrate how much of that time should be spent on the dummy part of the process half of it yeah the better the dummy the easier the finish yeah and it really that also depends on what your style of finish is like like there are people who can illustrate a spread in an hour and then there are there are illustrators that it would take them you know a week to illustrate a spread based on the style so it's it's not really a question you can answer, but the dummy, having a finished dummy that is approved that you love, that the art director loves, the editor loves, um, is invaluable because that's your roadmap to, to finishing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'd say it's, it's half, it's, 
it's the cerebral part of the battle. It's mm-hmm. it's the I listen to music while I make a dummy. I I can watch a show while I'm painting the the images for the book. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Um uh Kalanu asks a question we we talked about early on. Can we learn the majority of this and this is for people who 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 maybe weren't here at the beginning? But can we learn the majority of this if we are in SVS? So just join that. And I know that does not have the live aspect, but is it the same info there in those classes? If not, what's missing there? Short answer is uh, this is a much more comprehensive, focused course. You're going to get through the material faster than if you were just going through it uh, uh, on SVS. Um, uh, it's it's easier to take it in this children's book course class. It, if if you have, if you don't have a lot of time, I know this is a 10 week class, but if you don't have a lot of time, this is a very um, f- focused and direct way to learn how to do children's books, as opposed to just sifting through everything that that's offered on, on SVS. And that, that was the whole reason for this is to provide a much more concise, clear path for people wanting to learn children's books. There, there's a lot missing out of the first children's book class that's on SVS. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't just think because... that one's even on SVS anymore. What's that? I don't think that that original course is on the SVS anymore. The audio was really bad. And since we launched this, I don't think, I think that's even is. available. I don't think so. I'm going to look right now. Check, if it is, it let's take while, it while he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while he's finding that, I mean, you can you can wade through anything. You can learn to do anything on YouTube if you wanted to. But yeah. here's my question to you: Can you wade through the million videos to figure out which one is the real one that you need to get? That's mm-hmm. where the hard part is: is condensing the correct information in a in a in a usable uh, way. And like we because said, there's the a beginning. ton of information out there. Yeah, that's that's what we said in the beginning. The reason, yeah, it's it's still there. Um, it's called illustrating children's books part one and two you can't find anything <coughs> so there imagine this you've got um, you know i think it's 14 it's either 10 or 14 or 12 videos that are <laughs> two hours long two hours plus long and with a slider so how do you find i mean like it, you can go through it but again that class is is uh i don't know how many things we added to this new one that we were missing but we re- we re- rebuilt bit. this class over three years. We had a full syllabus that we actually threw away before we started yeah. making the video. We were going to use the old syllabus. Scratch. Yeah. And we, we had to, we had to reorganize the whole thing. We think that children's book pro we, we feel like it's way better organized material to deliver that. It makes more sense in the order that you're getting it. That's why we put it in that order. And we had meeting after meeting, we had version after version, <laughs> It's we tried for three years to to make Children's Book Pro, and we finally got it done. And so we're proud of it. Um, the thing but, is, it uh, works. And so my analogy would be like if you needed to go to, you know, from New York to, to L.A., you could walk there if you want to, and you will get there. But it's going to take a long time, and you're going to be very that's sore. That's a great analogy. <laughs> Whereas you could fly <laughs> in five hours, you'll be there, and you're fresh, and, you know, there, you're there that day. Yes, Children's Book Pro is the jet and taking individual classes either with anywhere and trying to piece together. This is how to make a career. SVS is about how to learn to draw well and to do the foundational stuff. But this is how to turn, take all that information and make it a career. Yeah. That's why we added the pro to the back of it. Children's book pro instead of just children's book course. Um, And that really is, is it's a, it's, we want to take you an amateur or semi, you know, pro am or whatever and turn you into a pro. Yeah. All right. We got about um, we do offer 10 a payment left. plan. I know I know some people some people are concerned about payments and stuff like that. We do offer a payment plan for it. Um yeah. we do think it's going to be offered again. Again, it might not be offered in the same way or in the same format. And so um, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it's gonna come around. It'll come around in some version. Sue asks, you know, is this is there how to's of pulling off uh pulling a written story together? And we don't focus on writing for children's books. That's that is a course in and of itself. And and we, the, the combined three of us, have illustrated maybe 10 books for every one book we've written uh, ourselves. So we don't feel like we are the people to teach that course. This is purely about how do you take a manuscript that's been written 
and turn that into a beautiful, engaging, well-paced uh, story, illustrated story. Uh, do you see. need a certificate um, or anything for completing it? Nope, just a pat on the back and, uh, and a really nice. <laughs> I think we do have really a really nice a, dummy. <laughs> we do have a certificate if you know if you you know if you're able to get uh, uh, you know your your job to pay for this. I know sometimes people are able to do that. You just need proof of completion. We can do something like that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, there's some countries that um, in Europe that require that for tax mm -hmm. purposes. Yeah. And we've done that in the past. Yep. Absolutely. We'll help you out there. Let's Sydney's see. Asking if there's new material added for the, for subsequent uh, editions of the class, would you have access to it as well? That's a great question. Um, if it was a significant change and not just clarifying a point or two, I mean, a lot of times that's how we're revising because this class is so streamlined at this point. But if there was something big that we added, like, oh, my gosh, we forgot this topic or this whole area has changed, uh, we would just update it in all the class shells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, we let's do see. talk about self-publishing. Um, Sarah's asking, would you cover be covering self-publishing as well as traditional publishing? All three of us are big proponents of self-publishing. All three of us do it and have done it and like it. So we're big yeah. fans. We don't yeah. we don't go into it in detail. Um, I'm going into it actually in more detail on my YouTube channel right now um, with the series on the the book that I'm working on right now. But um, but all the I mean everything about making a book is in this class. Everything you need to know about writing and or not well not the writing side but the the illustrating side and um, how to set up your templates and everything mm -hmm. like that is in this class. As far as um, self-publishing goes, we have actually talked about making a either a module that goes on to this for self-publishing specifically, but there's so many options there. Um, but that might be something that we do in the future, but we just don't go into huge detail on like, what do you do when you want to self-publish your book? Yeah. Uh, MSync asks, I'm sorry if you already answered this, but can we enroll, even if we haven't, if we can't attend anything live, like, can I work through it at my own pace? Absolutely. That's why we record the live sessions. So even if you can't make them, you could still watch them, uh, you know, put them on your headphones and work while you listen to them. So that's, uh, that's absolutely, uh, an option for you. And Emma, one thing thank, thank you, Emma, for, uh, for her shout out. Children's Book Pro is amazing, you guys. I improved my skills so much after just 10 weeks. Totally worth the investment. We appreciate that. We love hearing about that from people. Let me, let me insert this as well. One thing we encourage, if you're in this class and you can't make the live session, you can send in your questions that will be answered live mm -hmm. in the session. We'll read them. We'll read the question, answer it. And that way, if you live in a time zone that doesn't permit you to get up in the middle of the night um, to, to be here with us live or whatever's going on in your life, mm -hmm. you can still get your questions answered. Yeah. Cool. Uh, last day to register. What did we, what's our deadline there? I think it was posted earlier. Uh, the course kicks off February 16th and the first Zoom is February 23rd. So I would say next week is the is the last last time is is yeah. there's been a few questions also about um are, are we gonna you know i can't afford this now i might do it can i do it in the future there's a good chance that we'll run it again in the future for sure we don't have a schedule because we are um because we we basically fit it into our schedule and we all commit to doing it again mm -hmm. um there is a chance that we won't um there are things that are happening both with S SVS and other moving parts that we can't go into that could take us away from doing this. <laughs> there's, there's possibilities. There's no promise that we're going to be able to run it again like this. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just going to run it as long as, you know, as long as we're able to. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, okay. I, is that it? Uh, John Martinez has a dumb question. We always love those. 
um, we ask them all the time. So uh, let's see. Here. <laughs> I was just answering them via text, but um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, if it, if you've ha- if you purchased this course in the past, it should be in your dashboard. Yeah. And if it's not, just contact our customer support, and we'll get you sorted out. Yeah. Yep. So I think that's it. Um, I did like that one suggestion about the Discord having a, a combined Discord of all the previous like mm-hmm. uh, people. Have, yeah, there was some interesting. That point. There's not a lot of activity in the from the first class. Mm-hmm. One of the things I would suggest. And this won't help that person, but we if we do a combined um, Discord, it would. Yeah. But yep. um, if you're in the class and in the, in um, like let's say you're in this next class, that's the time to make friends and to start your own critique groups and to to, to really network and to be able to get emails, mm-hmm. even phone numbers and and set up things because like like I know authors that have been um, you know published for 20, 30 years, even longer that meet with their their critique groups they've been meeting for decades Mm -hmm. and they say once you find the right people that you can count on that you can trust that um you know they're not go of them they're not narcissists they're you know they're really good solid people that understand about give and take Mm -hmm. and um they're really sensitive um to feelings and they are reliable yeah you want to hold on to them and um this is a great place to meet those people to form um, lifelong bonds. We have, we have some of that synergy going on in our, um, in our forums at SVS as well. Mm -hmm. It's invaluable because you need these people to help bounce ideas off. Now, um, Jake and Lee and I, you know, we, we kind of, we networked and that's how we met met each other. Mm -hmm. We didn't grow up together or anything, but once we found each other, we, that's how, when we're working on a project, we, we share it with each other. We're our own little critique group and we yeah. use each other all the time and it is invaluable. Um, and, uh, to get a second set of eyes that you trust. So mm-hmm. meet people hold on to those people. Those people are gold and you're, you should be gold. Think about, you know, how you conduct yourself to be gold to them and how you can be, um, invaluable to someone else. Be yeah. indispensable. That's a, that's a Seth Godin quote. <laughs> make yourself indispensable yeah all right i think we're gonna wrap it up there um just to uh just want to thank everybody for showing up today uh thank you for all these questions and we uh yeah we look forward to seeing you in the next round of children's book pro um feel free to email us or uh, email svs learn if you do have any questions that were answered here and uh and we'll you know we're happy to like answer that as well so i think that's it you guys have anything else you wanted to say no we look forward to seeing you guys in there it's fun thanks for being here today yeah sounds good